Ladies and gentlemen, today is a very exciting day here at the TechSource headquarters because I've been waiting for a long time for this day to come so that I can build a PC in this, a piece of aluminum that's been bent a couple times. I've never been this excited to shoot a video since, since that what time we shot a video in Vegas. You guys might be asking, Ed, what on earth are you smoking? What's so special about this case? Let me tell you. I mean, it's unique, it's different, it stands out compared to the other mini ITX cases in the market. And you guys know me, I love trying new things on the channel because it brings back the tingling sensation that I once had when I originally started building PCs on the channel, like almost 10 years ago. One of the things that attracted me to this case in particular, other than its sexy curves, is how minimalistic it is. You know, it's got no side panels, it's got no hard drive cages. I mean, it is the cleanest looking case I've ever seen. And I thought, why not build a PC in it? So these are the parts I'll be using in the build. Let's go over them real quickly, starting with the CPU. Actually, you know what? Nobody cares about the parts. Let's just, let's start the build. And you know what? I'll go over the parts as we're putting stuff together. So let's clear the disc. For some reason, this didn't come with a, um, a manual. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to put together the parts. We'll figure this out because it can't be too hard, right? I mean, Look how simple this is. So I got the bag of accessories right over here. Oh, this is gonna be so fun to do. I'm so excited. Two seconds later. All right, so I got my manual pulled up on the side over here. It's actually a lot easier than I thought, but you know, gotta be safe than sorry. So the first step is to install these standoffs on the motherboard tray. All right, one goes there, one goes here, and the last one goes up here, here. All right, so now that is done. We need to hook up the motherboard. So the board we're going with, ladies and gentlemen, is the ROG Crosshair 8 Impact. This is a mini DTX motherboard that I decided to go with. Um, I couldn't really go with super high-end specs because Obviously, the cooling is kind of limited on there. In case you guys haven't noticed, I can't really add uh, any type of radiators on here without modding the case. So the CPU we're going with is the 3800X, currently the best 8-core, 16-thread CPU that AMD has to offer. Let's pop that in there. And for storage, we're going with the MP600, like usual, uh, two terabyte M.2 SSD. Since we are on the X570 platform, why not take advantage of PCI Gen 4 speeds? Like this is actually a brand new box. All right, we're not gonna need the um, heat sink on here, so let's pop this off. So the motherboard actually doesn't have any dedicated M.2 uh, SSD slots, so we're gonna be using this to install our M.2 drive. It is so difficult <laughs> taking the screws off with this tiny ass screwdriver. It kind of fits the theme actually. We're building a tiny minimalistic PC, so why not use a tiny screwdriver? All right, so our M.2 goes in here. Screw this in place and then close it up. There we go. And this goes into the uh, dim slot right on the motherboard. I think it's actually this way. So the next step, I guess we can do the RAM. Now the issue with the RAM is that I'm not sure if it's gonna interfere with the cooler because these are pretty tall. So if these don't work, I'm gonna have to go and find some low profile RAM to use with the system. But I really wanna use the Corsair Vengeance ones because they look so nice. And this is of course a 16 gigabyte kit at 3600 megahertz. So let's pop these in. It's not a big deal if it doesn't fit, we'll just swap it out. Okay, 
yeah, I honestly, I don't think the cooler is gonna fit, but YOLO. Um, technically, I could have gone with a 3950X if I really wanted to, but you know, because of our limited cooling, I didn't really want to push it too much. I, I feel like an eight core 16 thread processor is good enough for this build. It's not going to be used for much really. I'm building it just for the channel, but if it had a purpose, I would say gaming, maybe a little bit of productivity as well, since we do have, you know, eight core 16 threads. Um, the GPU, however, is a GTX 1060 because this is the only single fan GPU I have. And the main reason I got this is so it doesn't stick out too much from the case. It's gotta look really good, you know, with the um, monument. I'm gonna be using this one temporarily until the one I ordered recently from Newegg arrives. It's an RTX 2060 from EVGA. It's also a single fan. It's a little bit wider than this one, but you know, it's a faster graphics card. So I'd rather use that instead of this. All right, moment of truth. Let's install the cooler and see if it works out. So the cooler I went with is from Be Quiet. This is the Dark Rock TF. It's got 220 watt TDP. And this is pretty much the only one that I could find that has a low profile and also a black aesthetic to match the theme. So uh, Be Quiet was kind enough to send over the cooler and their SFX power supply to use in the build. So thank you guys so much for helping me out over here. Ooh, these fans look nice. Oh, this is such a good looking cooler. Look at this. That is awesome. All right, moment of truth. Is this gonna fit? Please let it fit. Oh my God, that is, that is a tight fit, man. I don't know. Let, let's go with it. Let, let's just see what happens. Let me, let's continue. Let's see what happens. We will adapt. We will overcome if need be. What is it? Adapt? Overcome? What is it? What's the third one? You improvise, you adapt, you overcome. We got installed the AMD bracket in the back of the motherboard before we put the cooler on. I completely forgot about that. So let's take off the RAM. Luckily, I still got this at the office. All right. Why are you laughing at me? Stop. I'm a professional. If it goes in like this, it's definitely not gonna fit because the heat pipes are coming in contact with this IO shield. But if I flip it around like this, we might, hallelujah, spank me and call me Sally. That fit actually a lot better. Is there enough clearance for the RAM? Oh no. Oh, I celebrated way too soon. God damn it. We're gonna have to go with different RAM. And in the wise words of Edgar Oganissian, everything happens for a reason. This build is destined not to have RGB, and I think it's gonna work out either way, so let's pick up some RAM. Luckily, I got some low-profile non-RGB RAM. Okay, let's check this out one more time, just to be sure. Oh, beautiful. That's like a few millimeters off from touching the RAM, but we made it work, guys. Oh yeah, let's get that on there. A lot of you guys watching the channel already know that I like spreading my paste. I like to have full coverage on the entire CPU, plus it's very satisfying for me, so. Oh yeah, look at that, oh yeah. I think we're ready to, oh no, we have to put the fans on here actually. So let's put these on. So the trick is to push down on the sides. There you go, a lot easier. 
Okay, same thing. Push down on the sides, one side at a time. That is a good looking CPU cooler. All right, time to install the cooler. Here we go. One of the things I hate about installing CPU coolers is, uh, is this part right over here, guys. Using a wrench to tighten the bolts. It's just a little inconvenient compared to installing an AIO. Time to hook up both of the fans to the splitter. And then we're gonna hook this up to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. So the CPU fan header is on this side. Let's see if we can route this in a way so it looks good. There you go. Time to kind of manage the cables over here so it's not sticking out too much. There we go. Look at that clean Alex. Nice. I think it's time to put this on the case. And the cool thing about this board is that it comes with an IO shield pre-installed. So it's actually gonna work really well with this case. One more to go, which is in a pretty difficult spot actually. So here we are guys, so far so good. I'm loving the way this is turning out. This is honestly, ah, oh, it's the cleanest looking build I've ever done for sure. So we're going with the SFX L Power from Be Quiet. Again, they sent this out with their cooler. So thank you guys so much for hooking me up. And um, the reason why we're going with an SFX power supply is because that's the only form factor that fits inside the case. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with full ATX power supplies. And of course, you gotta go with custom cables. So I did mention earlier, we're going with a, uh, an all black build with a little bit of orange accents to kind of spice it up, you know, give it some life. So these are from Cable Mod. I did go with nylon cables this time around instead of the usual paracords that I use for the builds because orange, I feel like pops way more on nylon cables. So I thought it would be perfect for this build. So to hook up the power supply in the case, we're gonna have to use some more Allen screws. So the power supply actually has to hover above the base plate a little bit because it makes sense. There is no ventilation on the bottom, so we do need that gap so it doesn't affect airflow. The black plate goes on like this to cover up the cables in the back. But before we do that, actually, let's install the power switch. You guys actually might be wondering, Ed, how on earth do you turn this PC on? There is no power button on the case. Well, that's what this is for. So we're gonna remove these screws just enough until we can run the cable through each one. So we're gonna grab our cable, run it through, as you guys can see, and then we're gonna tighten it back up. Just like that, and we have our power button. All right, so let's hook up the cables first before we install the back plate. So underneath, over. So they did provide us with a couple of cable clips. That way we can manage some of the cables. I wish these were wider, to be honest. This is not enough for the 24 pin. So I'm gonna use it for the uh, eight pin EPC instead. This tape that they provided doesn't even stick that great. You know what, I'm gonna get my own tape. I don't know what kind of adhesive they're using with this, but it is the worst I've seen. All right, so for cable management, this is what I ended up doing. <laughs> it looks pretty wild back here, but I had to use a bunch of Velcro straps to tie the cables together and some cable clips to kind of use it as, um, use them as anchor points 
to hold the cables up. Now the reason why I did that is because I can't really cover this hole over here since that is where the power button is gonna go into. And this back plate pretty much just covers all of this so you can't really see any of it. If you guys are building in this case, here's a quick tip. If you're planning on picking up custom power supply cables, you'll need specific lengths for these. Um, the CPU and ATX cable, I recommend getting at least 50% longer. And then for the graphics card cable, I recommend doubling it. So double the length of the GPU cable. And the reason why is because you're actually gonna have to route it in the back of the case and through the bottom. So unfortunately, when I placed my order in, I only extended the length by about 25%. So I got really lucky with the uh, CPU and the ATX cable, but as we can see, for the GPU cable, it's a bit too short. So I can't really route it from the bottom of the case. Um, so yeah, make sure you guys are extending the length on your cables if you're planning on building in this case. So let's go ahead and pop in the GPU actually. All right, so that is in. Let's see if this will reach, please. It's so close. Oh my God. That is such a tight fit, but you know what? I'm happy with that. Oh man, that looks so good. That looks so good. All right, I think the last thing to do is the back plate and the power button. Now, before I tighten this, actually, I need to route this cable through this hole. And this is for the power switch, so. So now we can go ahead and tighten the power button. Now we have a functioning power button. So, and then this, we'll wrap this at the end actually. Behold, the cleanest, most minimalistic PC that I've ever built on the channel. Look how portable it is. You can just Pick this up, toss it in your pocket, and go shopping with it. Or whatever, you can take this wherever you want. This is awesome. I was actually thinking about skinning the front of the power supply because the sticker over here kind of sticks out like a sore thumb, and I feel like a black skin would really blend the power supply with the rest of the theme. But unfortunately, the only thing I have here at the office is this glossy wood finish, which doesn't really work well with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and order just a matte black skin, which should be here in a couple days. So the next time you guys see this build in the setup, it will be 100% complete. I've just noticed, I haven't even talked about the case. I haven't even mentioned the case once. So this is called the Monument by Yule Beast, and it goes for $250, which is pretty steep. You know, I'm not gonna sit here and convince you guys that it's worth the $250. This is definitely not for everyone. I would say it's targeted mostly for the PC enthusiasts out there that wanna, go for either a minimalistic build or do something creative with their system. For $250, you can, you can get some nice parts for your PC, if I'm, uh, if I'm being honest. Oh, and one more thing. If you guys are planning on installing an SSD, technically there is a way. So once you hook up your SATA cables and you plug it in your SSD, all you need to do is pick up some 3M tape, attach it on the back of the SSD, and then just hook it up on the back here, however you want. So technically there is a way to install I think you could do like two, maybe even three SSDs if you position it that way. So, so yeah, I think with that said, let's power this on. Anyways, uh, there's no point in really benchmarking this now because I'll be swapping out the GPU and adding more RAM. But uh, you guys can expect full benchmarks in this setup video, which I'll begin shooting actually tomorrow. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to toss a like if you wanna see more types of these videos. I'll drop a link to all the parts used down below if you guys wanna check it out. I love you beautiful nose hairs, and I'll see you guys very soon in the next one. Peace.